संगठन में नेताओं के साथ मिलकर अतंत का परिश्रम किया किंतु भगवान ने भगवान से विमुख होने के कारण उन्हें अमृत की प्राप्ति नहीं हुई उसरों के भगवान ने क्यों अमृत क्यों नहीं पिलाया सो व्हाई डिडंट भगवान गिव नेक्टर टू द डीमोंस व्हाई व्हाट व्हाट डिड आई से व्हाई मोहिनी देवी लॉर्ड डिड नॉट गिव व्हाई मोहिनी देवी लॉर्ड नेक्टर टू द डीमोंस डिडंट गिव नेक्टर टू द डीमोंस the osura they are completely hurt opposite mood the and against to lord bhagwat vimukh bhi demons are against lord isliye bhagwan ne ata bhagwan se vimukh hone ke karan osuro ke vai daitya ko amrit prapti nahi hui so because the demons are against lord they didn't get the nectar mudra ko mat kar amrit So God fed the nectar to the demigods. After that, Lord left, riding on Garuda. Seeing the opens of the demigods, they. Demons didn't like, and then they wanted to attack. They attacked. They made an attack on the demigods. The demons, when they saw the plans of of the gym of the demigods. So when Bhagwan Sri Hari he gave the nectar to the demigods, then he left. Then at that moment, the demons they started to they were so ang angry and envious. Oh, they were envious of the demons. So the demigods they attacked the demi the the sorry demons attacked demigods. The demigods were strong because they had just taken the nectar, and also another point. They got the mercy of Bhagavan also. Oh, King! A fierce battle on the beach of the ocean of milk ensued between the demigods and the demons. The fighting was so terrible that simply hearing about it would make the hair on one's body stand on end. Both parties in that fight were extremely angry at heart, and in enmity they beat one another with swords, arrows, and varieties of other weapons. The sounds of the conch shells, bugles, drums, berries, berries, dumbbells, kettle drums, as well as the sounds made by the elephants, horses, and soldiers, who were both on chariots and on foot, were tumultuous. Hari Bol. On that battlefield, the charioteers. Some soldiers fought on the backs of camels, some on backs of elephants, some on asses, some on white-faced and red-faced monkeys, some on tigers and some on lions. In this way, they all engaged in fighting. Even they were fighting on asses, like on donkey donkeys. So some on the back of monkeys, 
Okay, some soldiers fought on the backs of vultures, eagles, ducks, hawks, and basa birds. Que isso, gente? Some fought on the backs of Temingalas, which can never devour huge whales. Sorry, which can devour huge whales. Some on the back of Sharabas, some on Buffalo. Rhinoceroses, rhinoceroses, cows, bulls, jungle cows, and Arunas. Other fought on the back, backs of jackals, rats, lizards, habit, rabbits, human beings, goats, black deer, swans, and boar, boars. In this way, mounted on animals of the water, land and sky, including animals with deformed bodies, both armies faced each other and went forward. <laughs> o king, o descendant of Maharaj Pandu, the soldiers of both the demigods and demons were decorated by canopies, colorful flags and umbrellas with handles made of valuable jewels and pearls. They were further decorated by fans made of peacock feathers and by other fans also. The soldiers, their upper and lower garments waving in the breeze naturally looked very beautiful and in the light of the glittering sunshine their shields Ornaments and sharp, clean weapons appeared dazzling. Thus, the ranks of soldiers seemed like two oceans with bands of bands of aquatics. For that battle, the most celebrated commander in chief, Maharaj Bal Boli, son of Birochan, was seated on a wonderful airplane named, named Bahayas. So, Bali Maharaj was there. O King, this beautifully decorated airplane had been manufactured by the demon Maya and was equipped with weapons for all types of combat. It was inconceivable and indescribab indescribable. Indeed, it was sometimes visible and sometimes not. Seated in this airplane under a beautiful protective umbrella and being fanned by the best of Chamaras, Maharaj Bali, surrounded by his captains and commanders, appeared just like the moon rising in the evening, illuminating all directions. Surrounding Maharaj Bali, on all sides were the commanders and captains of the demons sitting on their respective chariots. Among them were the following demons. So, so beautiful that place, divine. Surrounding Maharaj Bali, on all sides were the commanders and captains of the demons sitting on their respective chariots. Among them were the following demons, Namochi, Shambhar, Barn, Viprachiti, Ayomuk, Dimurda, Kalanab, Preti, Heti, Shakuni, Bhutan, Satap, Bajadamistra, Birochan, Hayagrib, Shankusira, Kopil, Megadundubhi, Tarak, Chakradrik, Sumba, Nishumba, Jamba Utkal Arishta Arishta Nemi Tepura Deep Moi The Sons of Pulom The Kales and the Nivata Kabach. All of these demons had been deprived of their share of the nectar and had shared merely in the labor of churning the ocean. Now they fought against the demigods, and to encourage their armies, they made a tumultuous sound like the roaring of lions, and blew loudly on conch shells. Balabhit, Lord Indra, upon seeing the situation of his ferocious rivals, became extremely angry. 
तो अत्यंत क्रोधित हो उठे so the demons they were attacking they started attacking text 25 chapter 10 canto 8 sitting on airavat an elephant who can go anywhere and who holds water and wine in reserve for showering lord in the just look just like the sun rising from udayagiri where there are reservoirs of water surrounding surrounding lord indra king of heaven indra bhi charo charo surrounding lord indra king of heaven were the demigods seated on various types of vehicles and decorated with flags and weapons present among them were vayu agni varun and other rulers of various planets along with their associates the demigods and demons came before each other and reproached one another with words piercing to the heart then they drew near and began fighting face to face in pairs O king Maharaj Bali fought with Indra Kartikeya with Tarak Varuna with Hathi and Mitra with Prahiti Jamaraj fought with Kalnab Kalnab Kalnemi Vishwakarma with Maidana Tashta with Shambhar Shambhar and the sun god with Virochan The demigod Ap- Aparajit fought with Namuchi and the two Ashwini Kumar brothers fought with Vrish Parva The sun god fought with the 100 sons of Maharaj Bali headed by Ban and the moon god fought with rahu the demigod controlling air fought with pulom and shumba and nishumba for the supremely powerful material energy durga devi who is called bhadra kali evam nishumba ke sath mahabali indra ka bhadra kali devi ke sangram karne lage he arindam o maharaj parikit Suppressor of enemies adding them Lord Shiv- Shiva fought with Jamba and Vibhavasu fought with Mahishasur Ihala along with his brother Vatapi fought the sons of Lord Brahma Dur- Durmarsha fought with Cupid the demon Utkal with the Matrika demi goddesses Bihaspati with Shukracharya and Shanaschar Saturn with Narakasur The Maruts fought Nibata Kabach, the Vasus fought the Kalke demons, Vishwadev demigods fought the Paloma demons. All of these demigods and demons assembled on the battlefield with a fighting spirit and attacked one another with great strength. All of them desiring victory, they fought in pairs, hitting one another severely with sharpened arrows, swords, swords and lances. Hmm. 
किसी की बाहू किसी की जान किसी की गर्दन और किसी की पैर कट गई दे सीवियर्ड वन अनदरस हेड्स यूजिंग वेपन्स लाइक बुशंदिस चक्रस क्लब्स एटसेट्रा द एलिफेंट्स हॉर्सेस chariots charioteers infantry soldiers and various kinds of carriers along with their riders were slashed to pieces the arms thighs necks and legs of the soldiers were severed and their flags bows bows and armor and ornaments were torn apart because of the impact on the ground of the legs of the demons and demigods and the wheels of the chariots Particles of dust, dust flew violent, violently into the sky and made a dust cloud that covered all directions of outer space, as far as the sun. But when the particles of dust were followed by drops of blood being sprinkled all over space, the dust cloud could no longer float in the sky. In the course of battle, the war field became st strewn with the severed heads of heroes, their eyes still staring and their teeth still pressed against their lips in anger. Helmets and earrings were scattered from the severed heads. Heads. Similarly, many arms decorated with ornaments, and clutching various weapons, were thrown here and there, as were many legs and thighs, which resembled the trunks of elephants. Maharaj, I think Gurudev went to forty-one. Maharaj Bali then attacked Indra with ten arrows and attacked Arabat in the scarier elephant. With four arrows, he attacked the four horsemen guarding Airavata's leg, and with one arrow, he attacked the driver of the elephant. So Indra shot an arrow. Forty-two. Before Bali Maharaj's arrows could reach him, Indra, King of Heaven, who is expert in dueling arrows, smiled and counteracted the arrows with arrows of another type. When Bali Maharaj. What is this? When Bali Maharaj saw the expert military activities of Indra, he could no longer restrain his anger. Thus, he took up another weapon known as Shakti, which blazed like a great firebrand. But Indra cut that weapon to pieces while it was still in Bali's hand. Then, after one by one, Bali Maharaj used the lance, prasa, tomara, rishi, and other weapons. But whatever weapons he took up, Indra immediately cut them to pieces. So the fight was going on, huh? My dear king, Bali Maharaj then disappeared and resorted to demoniac illusions. A giant mountain generated from illusion then appeared above the heads of the demigod soldiers. From that mountain fell trees blazing in a forest fire. Chips of stone with sharp edges like peaks also fell and smashed the heads of the demigod soldiers. The Supreme Lord, whose eyes resemble the petals of a newly blossomed lotus, sat on the back of Garuda, spreading his lotus feet over Garuda's shoulders. Dressed in yellow, decorated by the costume gem and goddess of fortune. Verse 54, chapter 10. And wearing an invaluable helmet and earrings, the Supreme Lord, holding various weapons in his eight hands, became visible to the demigods. As the dangers of a dream cease when the dreamer awakens, the illusions created by the jugglery of the demons were vanquished by the transcendental powers of the Supreme God as soon as he entered the battlefield. Indeed, simply by remembrance of the Supreme God, one becomes free from all dangers. O king, when a demon called Nemi, who was carried by a lion, saw the supreme god carried by Garur, was on the battlefield, the demon immediately took his trident, 
whirled it and discharged it at Garuda's head. The Supreme Lord Hari, the master of the three worlds, immediately caught the trident and with the same very weapon he killed the enemy Kal Nemi along with his career, the lion. Fifty-seven. Thereafter, two very powerful demons named Mali and Somali were killed by Lord, who severed their heads with his disc. Then Malayan, another demon, attacked the Lord with his sharp club. The demon, who was roaring like a lion, attacked the Guru, the Lord of the birds, who were born, born from eggs. But the Supreme Lord, the original person, used his disc to cut off the head of that enemy also. So this is the fight between demigods and demons. Next chapter, chapter 11. So chapter 11. Canto 8. First Shloka, 11th chapter. Shukadeva Goswami said, Thereafter, by the supreme grace of the supreme personality of Godhead, Shihari, all the demigods headed by Indra and Vayu were brought back to life. Being enlivened, the demigods began severely breathing the very same demons who had defeated them before. When the most powerful Indra became angry and took his thunderbolt in hand to kill Maharaj Bali, the dem demons began lamenting, Alas, Alas. So Indra, what did he do? Became angry. And he, want, he, would, he, would, he took his Bajra to kill Bali, Bali Maharaj. Sober and tolerant and well equipped with paraphernalia for fighting, Bali Maharaj moved before Indra on the great battlefield. King Indra, who always carries the thunderbolt in his hand, rebuked Bali Maharaj as follows. Indra said, O oh, rascal, as a cheater sometimes binds the eye of a child, eyes of a child, and then takes away his possessions. You are trying to defeat us by displaying some mystic power, although you know that we are the masters of all such mystic powers. Those fools and rascals who want to ascend to the upper planetary system by mystic power of mechanical means, or who endeavor to cross even the upper planets and achieve the spiritual world or liberation, and cause to be sent to the lowest region of the universe. Today, with my thunderbolt, which has hundreds of sharp edges, I, the same powerful person, shall sev severe your head from your body. Although you can produce so much jugglery through illusion, you are in endowed, endowed with a poor fund of knowledge. Now try to exist on this battlefield with your relatives and friends. Bali Maharaj replied, All those present on this battlefield are certainly under the influence of eternal time, and according to their prescribed activities, they are destined to receive fame, victory, defeat, and death one after another. So what happens in this world? Everyone is inspired by the time to fight with one another. Seeing the movements of time, those who are cognizant of the real truth, Neither rejoice nor lament for different circumstances. So those who are knowledgeable, intelligent, they know. He doesn't have any 
suffering or not distress. He knows that everything in this world, people, everyone is inspired by the time, whatever they do. You demigods think that your own selves are the cause of your attaining fame and victory because of your ignorance. Saintly persons feel sorry for you. Therefore, although your words afflict the heart, we do not accept them. Verse 10, Shukadeva Goswami said, After this rebuking Indra, king of heaven, with sharp words, Bali Maharaj, who could subdue any other hero, drew back to his ear the arrows known as Narachas and attacked Indra with these arrows. Then he again chastised Indra with strong words. Since Maharaj Bali rebukes were truthful, King Indra did not at all become sorry, just as an elephant beaten by its driver's rod does not become agitated. When Indra, the defeater of enemies, released his infallible thunderbolts scepter at Bali Maharaj with a desire to kill him, so Indra, he shot some infallible thunderbolt, Shatru Samhar, his infallible thunderbolt scepter to kill Bali. Bali Maharaj indeed fell to the ground with his airplane, like a mountain with its wings cut off. Wings cut off. When the demon Jambhasur saw that his friend Bali had fallen, he appeared before Indra, the enemy, just to severe serve Bali Maharaj with friendly behavior. So great powerful Jambhasur carried by a lion approached Indra and forcefully struck him on the shoulder with his club. He also struck Indra's elephant. Being beaten by Jambasur's club, Indra's elephant was confused and aggrieved. Thus it touched its knees to the ground and fell unconscious. Therefore, thereafter, Matali, Indra's chariot driver, brought Indra's chariot, which was drawn by 1,000 horses. Indra then left his elephant and got onto the chariot. So the name of the charioteer of Indra is Matali. Appreciating Matali's service, Jambasur, the best of demons, smiled. Nonetheless, he struck Matali in the battle with a trident of blazing fire. Although the pain was extremely severe, Matali tolerated with great patience. Indra, however, became extremely angry at Jambasur. He struck Jambasur with his thunderbolt and thus severed his head from his body. When Narazarishi informed Jambasur's friends and relatives that Jambasur had been killed, the three demons named Namuchi, Bal, and Paka arrived on the battlefield in great haste. Rebuking Indra with harsh, cruel words that were pierced into the heart, this demon showered him with arrows, just as torrents of rain wash a great mountain. So he is describing the war, the battle.
इसी प्रकार फ्रेंड्स वही जीमोस एंड दी मिगोड्स दे फॉट अगेंस्ट इच अदर शुक्रदेव को स्वामी तो उधे महाराज परिकित मन ब्रह्मसौ Forty-three. When Brahma saw the imminent total annihilation of the demons, he sent a message with Narad, who went before the demigods to make them stop fighting. Forty-four. The great sage Narada said, Narada told all of you demigods are protected by the arms of Narayana the supreme personality of godhead and by his grace you have gotten the nectar by the grace of the goddess of fortune you are glorious in every way therefore please stop this fighting Narada gave order that it was not necessary to fight any longer Shukadev Goswami said, accepting the words of Narada, the demigods gave up their anger and stopped fighting. Being praised by their followers, they returned to their heavenly planets. There on that hill, Shukracharya brought to life all the demoniac soldiers who had not lost their heads, trunks, and limbs. He achieved this by his own mantra known as Samjivani. So Shukracharya had that mantra called Samjivani mantra. With this mantra, he could he could. Uh, Bring back to life the demons. Bali Maharaj was very experienced in universal affairs. When he regained his senses and memory, by the grace of Shukra Charja, he could understand everything that had happened. Therefore, although he had been defeated, he did not lament. Sorry. So now we are in the twelfth chapter. The Mohini Murti incarnation bewilders Lord Shiva. This chapter, twelve, canto eight. Shukadeva Goswami said, "Hey Maharaj Parikit, Hari, in the form of a woman, captivated the demons and enabled the demigods to drink the nectar." After hearing of these pastimes, Lord Shiva, who is carried by a bow, went to the place where Madhusudan and the Lord resides. Accompanied, accompanied by his wife Uma, and surrounded by his companions, the ghosts, Lord Shiva went there to see the Lord's form as a woman. So when Shiva got to know that Bhagavan Shihari had manifested the Mohini form. And had given nectar to the gods and demigods, and cheated the demons. Listening to this, Shivji, he he went with his companions, and he wanted to see the form of. Shiva Mohini Murti. And 
महादेव जी बड़ो सुख पूर्वक आश्रम पर बैठ गए Supreme God welcomed Lord Shiva and Uma with great respect and after being seated comfortably Lord Shiva duly worshiped the Lord and smiling spoke as for smilingly spoke as follows So Mahadev said, "O oh, chief demigod, among the demigods, O oh, all-pervading Lord, Master of the universe, by your energy you are transformed into the creation. You are the root and efficient cause of everything. You are not the material. Indeed, you are the super super soul or supreme living force of everything. Therefore, you are Parameshwari, the supreme controller of all controllers." The manifest, the unmanifest, false ego, and the beginning, maintenance, and annihilation of this cosmic manifestation all come from you, the supreme personality of Godhead. But because you are the absolute truth, the supreme absolute spiritual soul, the super Brahma, such chains as birth, death, and sustenance do not exist in you. Pure devotees are greatly saintly persons who desire to achieve the highest goal in life, and who are completely free from all material desires for sense gratification. Engage constantly in the transcendental service of your lotus feet, my Lord. You are the supreme Brahma, complete in everything, being completely spiritual. You are eternal, free from the material modes of nature, and full of transcendental bliss. Indeed, for you there is no question of lamentation, since you are the supreme cause, the causes of all causes. Nothing can exist without you. Yet we are different from you in a relationship of cause and effect. For in one sense, the cause and effect are different. You were the original cause of creation, manifestation, and annihilation, and you bestowed benedictions upon all living entities. Everyone depends upon you for the results of his activities, but you are always independent. My dear Lord, your lordship alone is the cause and the effect. My dear Lord, you are. So who is saying all this? Shiva is praising Lord in this way. Shiva is giving is glorifying Lord Shri in this way with these two things. So Shukadeva Goswami told, Hey Maharaj Parikhit, verse 14, When Lord Vishnu was thus requested by Lord Shiva, who carries a trident in his hand, he smiled with gravity and replied to Lord Shiva as follows. Bhagavan said, verse 15, When the demons took away the jug of nectar, I assumed the form of a beautiful woman to bewilder them by directly cheating them and thus do act in the interest of the demigods. O best of the demigods, I shall now show you my form that is very much appreciated by those who are lusty. Since you want to see that form, I shall reveal it in your presence. So first Bhagavan told, if you see this Mohini form, your heart will be uh, agitated or like um, uh, stimulated. So first God forbid, but then he forbade, then he said, okay. Okay, so you want to see Mohini form. But because you want so much, I will show you my Mohini form. 
Shukadeva Goswami continued, after speaking in this way, the Supreme Lord Vishnu immediately disappeared and Lord Shiva remained there with Uma, looking for him all around with moving eyes. Thereafter, Lord Shiva, in the, she, there is a nice forest nearby, so Bhagavan with his Jogamaya, he created a beautiful forest in that place, full of trees with reddish pink leaves, because Mahadev wanted to see what? He wanted to see the Mohini form, Mohini Murti. So full of trees with reddish pink leaves and varieties of flowers. Lord Shiva saw a beautiful woman playing with a ball. Her hips were covered with a shining sari and ornamented with a belt. So Bhagavan manifested such manifested such a beautiful form. Which form? Mohini Rup. So how is the Mohini Rup? Who how is Mohini form? Mohini Rup. So first Shiva saw a beautiful forest, a forest full of trees and flowers, very beautiful. Then he saw a beautiful young girl playing with a ball. So because the ball was falling down and bouncing up, as she played with it, her, her breasts trembled and because of the weight of those breasts and her heavy flower garlands, her waist appeared to be all but breaking at every step as her two soft feet, which were reddish like coral, moved here and there. I'm trying to find which one. Okay, 20. The woman's face. The woman's face was decorated by broad, beautiful, restless eyes, which moved as the bow bounced here and there from her hand. The two brilliant earrings on her ears decorated her shining cheeks like bluish reflections, and the hair scattered on her face made her even more beautiful to see. As she played with the ball, the side covering her body became loose and her hair scattered. She tried to bind her hair with her beautiful left hand, and at the time she played with the ball by striking striking it with her right hand. This was so attractive that the Supreme Lord, by his internal potency in this way, captivated everyone. When Lord Shiva observed that beautiful woman playing with the ball, she sometimes glanced at him and slightly smiled in bashfulness. As he looked at the beautiful woman and she watched him, watched him, he forgot both himself and Uma, his most beautiful wife, as well as his associates nearby. When the ball leaped from her hand and fell at a distance, the woman began to follow it, but as Lord Shiva observed these activities, a breeze suddenly blew away the fine dress and belt that covered her. Thus, Lord Shiva saw the woman, every part of whose body was beautifully formed, and the beautiful woman also looked at him. 
Therefore, thinking that she was attracted to him, Lord Shiva became very much attracted to her. So what did you understand of what is happening? So when Bhagavan, Ram, uh, sorry, when Bhagavan manifested as Mohini Muriti, Shiva was looking at her and she was, Mohini was playing with a ball, a ball. Lord Shiva, his good sense taken away by the woman because of lucid desires to enjoy with her, became so mad for her that even in the presence of Bhavani, he did not hesitate to approach her. His senses being agitated, Lord Shiva, victimized by lusty desires, began to follow her, just as a lusty elephant follows a she-elephant. The beautiful woman was already naked, and when she lo saw Lord Shiva coming toward her, she became extremely bashful, thus she kept smiling. But she, did her, she hid herself among the trees and did not stand in one place. After following her with great speed, Lord Shiva caught her by the braid of her hair and dragged her near him. Although she was unwilling, he embraced her with his arms. Uh, being embraced by Lord Shiva like a female elephant embraced by a male, the woman whose hair was scattered swirled like a snake. O king, this woman who had large high hips was a woman of Jogamaya, presented by the Supreme Lord. She released herself somehow or other from the fond embrace of Lord Shiva's arms and ran away. So Bhagavan is always beautiful. Rupa Madhuri, sweetness of his form. The form of Lord is so beautiful. Just as man and bull, elephant follows a female elephant who is able to conceive pregnancy. Lord Shiva followed the beautiful woman and discharged semen. So first Shiva embraced Mohini and caught her, but somehow Mohini, she came out from the embrace of Lord Shiva. But with her sidelong glances, she was still stealing his heart. Who? Mohini. So she ran away and Shiva ran after her. So just as a maddened bull elephant, follows a female elephant who is able to conceive pregnancy. Lord Shiva followed the beautiful woman and discharged semen, even though his discharge of semen never goes in vain. O King, wheresoever on the surface of the globe fell the semen of the great personality of Lord Shiva, mines of gold and silver, silver later appeared. So the silver comes from the body of Lord Shiva. So the gold and silver mine, mines come from this semen of Lord Shiva. Kani means mine. Khan. You know, silver mine. Gold mine, you know, they appeared from Lord Shiva. Following Mohini, Lord Shiva went everywhere near the shores of the rivers and lakes, near the mountains, near the forest, near the gardens, and wherever there lived great sages. Oh, Maharaj Parikit, best of kings, when Lord Shiva had fully discharged semen, he could see how he himself had been victimized by the illusion created by the Supreme Lord. Thus he restrained himself from any further Maya. Hmm. 
Thus Lord Shiva could understand his position and that of the Supreme Lord who has unlimited potencies. Having reached this understanding, he was not at all surprised by the wonderful way Lord Vishnu had acted upon him. Seeing Lord Shiva unagitated and unashamed, Vishnu Madhusudana was very pleased that he resumed his original form and spoke as follows. The Supreme God told, O best of the demigods, although you have been amply harassed because of my potency in assuming the form of a woman, you are established in your position. Therefore, may all good fortune be upon you. My dear Lord Shambhu, Verse 38. My dear Lord Shambhu, who within this material world but you? can surpass my illusory energy. So, people are generally attached to sense enjoyment and conquered by its influence. Indeed, the influence of material in nature is very difficult for them to surmount. Bhagavan told, the material external energy, Maya, who cooperates with me, in creation and who is manifested in the three modes of nature will not be able to bewilder you any longer. Shukadeva Goswami said, O King, having thus been praised by the Supreme Lord who bears the mark of Srivats on his chest, Lord Shiva circumambulated him. Then after taking permission from him, Lord Shiva returned to his abode Kailash along with his associates. So, Mahadeva, he considered, I was run, why I was running behind this Maya, uh, running after her. So, he like repented, so Mahadeva, he regretted. Glani means repentation or regret. So Lord Shiva said, In jubilation, then addressed his wife Bhavani, who is accepted by all authorities as the potency of Lord Vishnu. Verse 42, chapter 12. Lord Shiva said, O Goddess Parvati, you have now seen the illusory energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is the unborn master of everyone. Although I am one of the principal expansions of His Lordship, even I was illusioned by His energy. What then is to be said of others who are fully dependent on Maya?
जो मनुष्य ये समुद्र मंथन तथा When I finished performing mystic yoga for 1000 years, you asked me you asked me upon whom I was meditating. Now here is that supreme person to whom time has no entrance and to who the Vedas cannot understand. Then there were one who constantly hears or describes this narration of the churning of the ocean of milk will never be fruitless indeed. Chanting the glories of the Supreme Lord is the only means to annihilate the sufferings in this world. So, if we read and we speak again and again this kata, all your lust desires will be free from your heart. Assuming the form of a young woman and thus bewildering the demons, the Supreme Personality of God had distributed to his devotees, the demigods, the nectar produced from the churning of the ocean of milk. Unto that Supreme Lord, who always fulfills the desires of his devotees, I offer my respectful obeisances. Again and again, I pay obeisance to this Bhagavan. So, what is the meaning? Even Shiva, he was, he could not conquer Mohini, Maya. Means Brahma, Shiva, and even great devotees, they, sorry, cannot conquer the lust. Who can only conquer the lust? Bhagavan, Sri Hari. So the future Mavantaras are being described here now. So many stories now. M much of the history. The name of the Manos and Ten Sons of Mano. What did I say yesterday? How Ramachandra Bashful. Ramachandra went to the forest. Lakshman went along with him. Bharatsagutrugna were in Nanihal. Bashful. So when Bharat came back from Nanihal, then he got to know whatever everything that had happened. How his mother, actually the servant of his mother, Mantara, because of her, all the situation had changed in Ayodhya. Even his father was now that, that dead because of her because of her decision. So Ramachandra, for 14 years, he had gone to the forest. Listening to this, Bharataji was so upset. He was so upset. So in the end, because of the desire of Guru Vashista, Bharata had to do the, you know, the funeral rites of Dasharatha Maharaj. This is called Anteshti Karma. So Bharata did this for Dasharatha Maharaj. What did I say? Anteshti Karma. Means that you know, Shraddha and burning the body, funeral rites. So if your father or someone dies, you have to like burn the body in the cremation place taking the bath after and also according to time, place and circumstance, there are many rituals. Yeah. 
शसान में जाए उसके आग जो रहता है वो आग को निभाते हैं so the hindi froze uh, the, i couldn't uh, listen sorry what gurudev said so i had to take the bones also the rest of the bones and throw the bones in the ganges after the burning of the body then you make like a platform on top put the tulasi also on the head have you seen in the crematorium they put the tulsi <laughs> so maybe six seven days of funeral rites also have to follow habishana bog have to eat only once in a day some some rice and dal cooked with ghee only that this called habishana also you cannot even cook in that house when somebody dies cannot like uh, burn fire in the house you have to take cook in someone else's house like some in bengal is like this then there is also some puja made by the brahmanas they put some pots and put something inside and then after that then how many days maybe 12 13 days maybe 14 15 days of funeral rites acha 12 din 12 days okay 14 days in other places no problem whatever so prashad din nivedan hota hai they offer prashadam har roz jo hai wo prashad dete hain every day they give the prasadam feeding the crows also the crows eat have you seen this and then after 14 or 15 days then you have to shave your hair your head shraddha karma and then all the friends and relatives uh, sister brothers everyone or all the relatives we call everyone first to feed the brahmanas so first to feed the brahmanas after first sacrifice then you feed the brahmanas and after feeding the brahmanas then you feed all your friends and everyone you give food to everyone so yahan par bhi aa rahe katha prasang jo hai so in this context of katha antashti kriya after performing this funeral rites for the shrat maharaj phir shant ho jata hai kai ki hota hai sab paath karte hai bhagavat paath karate after funeral rites everything then is more calm So according to your money also like maybe you do the bhagavatam some bhagavat katha or maybe only one git one day speaking bhagavad gita or a mine especially like you like you you organize some reading of the scriptures like for example garuda puran here but in bengal uh, they make a lot of uh, bhagavad gita the person is arranged some reading of the gita and it's good to read the gita So what is the meaning? Uh, they speak a lot of Vairagya Katha renunciation talks from the scriptures. Because you see someone burning, you know, some relative. So also if you renunciation on one day my body also will be burned in the same way. Why I am doing so many material things so This is true. What is pinda dan? Pinda churana. I don't understand what Gurudev is saying. Sorry. Ah, uh, means you're saying from now on we don't have relationship any longer. Like you're cutting the relationship with that person who died. Now we belong to another li- lineage. Now we belong to which li- lineage? gotra in the conception of the smartas so you now going to achuta gotra and i stayed in my own gotra my own lineage 
so this Pingadan Churana, name of this, change the relationship you had with that person. Then you call the Brahmanas for them to read the Bhagavad Gita. They pacify you. Then what happens l then later? For two, four days or six days, you're so upset. Oh, my father passed away. My mom passed away. You feel so much sadness. You're so much upset. But after some time, slowly, slowly, your mind becomes okay again. Also, you understand. What to, like, if you're lamenting, what will change by lamenting? Like Arjuna was lamenting and Bhagavan made him understand, explained to him. Only the body dies, but the soul is eternal. <coughs> so the soul is eternal. So why are you unhappy because of the soul? And slowly, slowly your mind changes. So everyone becomes like Kailash. Do you know the story of Kailash? There was an old man called Kailash. He was plowing the fields. <laughs> he had such land. And he was plowing the field. And one day, Narada told to Vishnu, Hey Prabhu, your dumb is transcendental, eternal. Why don't you bring your devotees to this, uh, your eternal abode? Why? All the jivas are your sons and daughters. All of us, we are the sons of the nectar. This is true. All of us, we are sons of the nectar, Krishna the nectar. We are sons of and daughters of Lord. So Narada asked to Vishnu, you are seeing their sufferings. Why? Why don't you bring them to your spiritual world, to your abode? You are independent. You have inconceivable potency. If God wanted, he could take us or not. So, Narodish, in this way, he asked. He asked to Vishnu, why don't you bring them over here to your spiritual abode? The jivas, your sons and daughters, they are suffering in this material world. And you created this maya and they are suffering in it. So, Bhagavan Shri had it told. Narad, what can I tell you? They don't want to come to my abode. They don't want to come to my abode. I want to bring them over here, but they don't want to come. They don't want to come. Well, but they're suffering in the material world and they, they don't want to come. Who does not wanna, what, does, doesn't want to leave the pla leave the place of unhappiness and go to the place of happiness? Yeah, this is the exactly definition of Maya. They don't want to come. They don't want to come. Narada said, I cannot believe in this. I cannot believe this. Believe this. Bhagavan told to Narada, Okay, look. To take out, to free one jiva from the... From the um, Jail of Maya and bring to my abode. I have I've been trying so much to do that. Sometimes I go myself to try to free the jivas to deliver them. Sometimes I bring my devotees. I take my I send my devotees. Sometimes my incarnations, but they don't want to come. They don't want to come here. This is the thing. Just like the insect of the stool, the stool worm wants to stay in the stool. He likes the stool. I mean, sorry, it likes the stool. You know what is bishta? It's like stool. You don't know what is bishta. Is stool. Yeah. You do you understand Bengali? Yeah. Yeah. Do you understand this meaning? 
Nikit means something you've thrown away. You've thrown away something. Split. It's called Nikita. Nishchiban means what is? Nishchiban means what? Spit. Spit. Maki means a fly. So, where there is some bad smell, the flies are all over the place and humming, I mean, blah, 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 like humming. So, so when you listen, the sound looks like a nice thing, but throne spits, the flies are humming all over the thing. So, what did I say? Nikipt means throne, spit, spit out. Nishiban means like saliva, you know, like uh, spitting this. Like some person is chewing the pan and like, <laughs> like spitting. And the flies, maki, they are, they are like, I don't know, proper word, like humming. Bum, 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 like that sound they make. Some people think. So I know Bengali. What do I need? Dictionary. You know, you know English. So why do you need a dictionary? Isn't it? That's why it's necessary. Because sometimes, and the hand is frozen in internet connection. I don't know what Gurudev said. So Bhakti Hridayi Ban Maharaj, that, he, that college is there from him, I think. So his English was so difficult to read each word of English. He would say, you needed the Oxford Dictionary. Even the English man could not understand English people. His, so the Bengali of our Prabhupada was so difficult. You can understand the Bengali of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. But the Bengali of Shla Bhaktisiddhan Saraswati Prabhupada, his Bengali words were so difficult. So you know Bengali, but how it's difficult to understand? Because he would use very difficult words. So Prabhupada, he wrote a beautiful article. So an English came, Englishman came, he was very he was very proud. Oh, I learned Bengali. I know Bengali, this Englishman. Okay. One learned scholar man was there, Bengali. So he was like, I had to say, oh, I'm Englishman, man. I learned such nice Bengali. Even in big assemblies, I speak Bengali. Everybody is like charmed by my Bengali. So, but so he was very puffed up, thinking, "Oh, I learned. I've learned Bengali." So a Bengali learned learned the man. So though you learned Bengali, okay, go to call the rickshaw wall next to us. Let's take the rickshaw. Okay, this is nothing. No problem. You want to test me with these small things? Okay, call the rickshaw wall. But the Rikshawala was speaking which Bengali? <laughs> he was calling the Rikshawala like this. Hey, tri chakra chalane wale. Like, oh, you riding the three cycle vehicle like this. You know, that person who is riding that thing with three um, wheels. Please, you come here. No one rickshaw, not anyone rickshaw, not even one rickshaw stopped for him. So, like one who has a vehicle with three wheels. 
because the rickshaw has three wheels, you know. The rickshaw has three wheels. Call him. But no one was coming, no one rickshaw, not even one rickshaw. So the, the learned Bengali said, Hey, rickshaw, come here. And the rickshaw came. So in every language, there are difficult words, hard words. I mean like, so if you are so proud, oh, I learned everything, this is your foolishness. You cannot even learn your own language, everything. If someone says, oh, I know all language, only God knows all languages. Isn't it? Okay, you speak Hindi, for example. There are many words that you don't know the meaning, you have to search. Isn't it? Bengali also, many words that actually speak in English, these words. We speak in English because we don't know the Bengali, that word that we haven't studied or we don't know. Like cigarette. Cigarette is an English word, but how to say cigarette in, in Bengali? Cigarette is an English word. How to say cigarette in Bengali? Churut. Like we say train. How to say train in Bengali? We cannot speak Bengali. So slowly, the words are being forgotten. People, they don't even learn them. Do you understand? All languages. Bengali, Urdu, English also, Portuguese, Spanish. In all languages. There are more difficult words. That to know the meaning, you have to search in the dictionary. In all languages, there are words that are more... I don't know how to explain English, but uh, like, you know, difficult, like more uh, refined or more not so used, so you don't know the meaning. So those who have ego think, oh, I know everything, I've learned everything. He's a foolish, completely foolish. Foolish. So I was speaking about time's up until I still have 10 minutes. What? Oh, yeah. So, Anteshti means what? Anteshti. It's funeral rite we're speaking about. So, after he died, you know, burn, burning his body and everything, this Anteshti Kriya, funeral rite, so less rites for the person. So I want to say that there are many words that are difficult to understand the real meaning. So Bharat, according to the desire of Ashish Tarishi Gurudev, Bharat did this uh, funeral rites for Dasharat. So this takes some days, I told, maybe five days, six days, eleven days, twelve days, anyway. For one month even some people do this. They are lamenting for the person who died for one month. They sleep on the ground. They eat only once in a day. You don't even wash their clothes. You don't use soap. They only use one dirty clothes for all these days. They show some renunciation also. For 11 days only same cloth, clothes, same set of clothes. So I forgot because a long time I haven't been in Bengal. So 
so I don't have more relationship with Bengal. I just saw, like, when my father left body, I was very small, but I saw, I don't remember so much, but I saw how they do in Bengal. So, I don't know, because I didn't see how these things are happening in Bengal, I didn't see. So, what I want to see about the, sorry, I want to speak about Anteshti Kriya, these funeral rites. After this, when Bharat, he, he took all the wealth of the kingdom and he came to meet Ram. Vashista Gurudev told, Your mother has two blessings from your father. One blessing is that you should be the king, and another that your son, sorry, your brother Ram should go to the jungle for 14 years dressed as a Muni. Because the throne cannot be empty, maybe some enemy can attack. So you have to sit in the throne. Bharat said very nice. So, when to put a king in the throne, they do many like a uh, ritual, like a ceremony to crown the king. So, the Munis they do swastivach and they bless the king like this. So, all the ministers had come. All the rishis Bharata would sit in the throne. Then suddenly Bharata came and asked them. This story is very beautiful. Bharata told, Look, you all are ministers. What is the meaning meaning of a minister? Tell me. Those who give advice to the king, their ministers. Those who are good advisors, they are called mantris, ministers. If someone may, might do something bad or take a bad decision, the, the duty of the minister is to give a proper advice that. So Bharata told the conclusion that my father presented to you. Sorry, the conclusion that my father presented, he accepted what a woman told. So did you accept this? All the ministers, they looked down, looked down, looked down. Who is the inheritor of this throne? Who is the... This throne is only meant for him. No one else has the eligibility to sit on this throne. Only my brother Ram. Only Ram, no one else. Hmm. Uh, so if I say something wrong, will you not give me proper advising and if somebody selling something wrong, some bad decision, wrong decision, like a king is taking a wrong decision, the ministers have to give the proper the proper decision, like the proper advice. But if the king does not want to accept that decision of the the ministers, the king should actually leave that, uh, like um, 
leave his post because this is actually inauspicious if he's making a bad decision and not following even the, also the good advices of the ministers and no 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 because it's frozen him they could not listen i think gurudev said the minister have to give up their post if not the king okay so so he's saying ram is in everyone's heart arama is giving uh, happiness to everyone in the kingdom so if you're, he's not sitting in the throne hindi connection is difficult so this is something wrong if ram is not sitting on the throne this is something which is wrong not proper hindi connection is freezing up all the time the hindi life so why haven't you given up your position as ministers? Bharat told a very, very nice thing. He told. The only uh, eligible person to sit on the throne of Ayodhya uh, is my brother Ram. This is true. So Dashrath Maharaj himself had announced in the beginning, what? He had announced, I will give the position of king to Ram. Before Dashrath Maharaj had announced this. After then KK asked for the benediction to him. But he had already given to Ram, so how possible come back? Like come back in his word. So how Dasharatha Maharaj gave? Because they preferred to die than to break the promise. But he already said he would give to Ram. So how? So my father couldn't give to the word, word to KK. Sorry, because my my father is always fixing the truth. So see the conceptions of Bharat. I am also not uh, eligible to sit in this throne. Only one person can sit in this throne, my brother Ram. Because actually my father had already announced before that Ram would sit in this throne. Because before the Shadrach Maharaj called Vashista Rishi, then he also called Ram to the assembly and he told, Oh Ram, the subjects and the ministers, they agreed that you should be the king. What the Ramananda Sagar showed in his uh, Rama, Ramayana series was very nice. Because Ram at the time he told, Oh my father, which offense did I do that you want me to set the throne? Very brief words Ram used at that moment. Why me? I don't want to sit in the throne, on the throne. So Ram Chandra, he was forbidding, he didn't want. But Vashistarishi Gurudev, he told, Ram, think about it. Consider it. Do you want your own happiness or the happiness of your father? So that what Ramananda Sagar showed, I don't know in Ramayana how much is there because I didn't read the whole Ramayana. I read some or not or some parts of the Ramayana, not everything. But the Ramananda Sagar Ramayana shows a very beautiful uh, description in this moment. So Rama told, no, sorry, Vashista told to Ram, your father desires that you sit in the, on the throne. You need to sit on the throne, not because of your desire or not. It's to follow the uh, desire of your father. That's why you must sit on the throne. Do you understand? Then Ramachandra, he accepted. He so what I want to say is that the Sharat Maharaj already had given his wealth like the kingdom to Ramchandra. So how he would give to Bharat later on? And Dasharat Maharaj also, he didn't say, Ram, go to the forest. He didn't use these words. Dasharat Maharaj didn't say. Actually, the stepmother told, KK told, Oh, I asked this benediction from your father and 
Actually, Dasar Maharaj was, uh, he was fainted on the floor. So you see also the conceptions of Ramachandra, his idea. He was thinking, okay, if she wants, then okay, he can give no problem. Why to fight? What is the problem? So he left. And then Bharata, what did he do? I was telling. How Bharata, he brought all the wealth of Ayodhya, all the ingredients for the Raja Bishik, for the crowning of the king, like ceremony of making the king. Let's go and let's go where the Ram is, my brother is. Let's bring elephants, um, horses, everything. And they came. So let's do Raja Bishik. Let's crown my brother king, wherever he is. Let's do it. So I was telling one story. In one Puran, sorry, in one Ramayana, it's written that. Look. So Bharata had brought some wooden sandals. So these wooden sandals Bharata brought with him or Ramachandra was using already them in the forest. So many people there had different opinions about these wooden sandals. But Ramananda Sagar shows that when Rama went to the forest, he went barefoot to the forest. So Ram Lakshman and Sita, they went barefoot to the forest. So, Bharata brought those wooden sandals from where? He brought from Ayodhya to Chitrakut? Or Ramachandra had already these wooden sandals with him before? So, this this question raised. Uh, raised? Yeah. So, this very interesting story. Many Panditas, they tell. I read, I listened from some Pandita. And he also told one shloka from the Ramayana. That these wooden sandals, they were already was in the Raghuvamsa, the Raghu dynasty. When Maharaja Raghu, from Ikwaku Vamsa, Ikushaku Vamsa dynasty, one of the kings, when Maharaja Raghu became the king, Raghu, so there was a saint. He gave the, 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 this gift of the wooden sandals to the Raghu king. And Raghu didn't use this wooden sandals on his feet. He was thinking, maybe some inspiration in his heart or some uh, aerial, vo aerial voice. He was, he, th he thought, in my dynasty, if the if the throne becomes throne like the throne of the king become empty for a while, this wooden sandal can stay on the throne and be worshipped on on the on behalf of the king, like. So always the Raghu king, the king Raghu, he would, he would put these wooden sandals on top, like in one place near, like top of the throne of Ayodhya. Some pandas they tell this story. Do you understand? So Raghu king, king Raghu, So, he, so they knew. When Vishnu will touch these wooden sandals, and when this wooden this throne will be empty, then these wooden sandals will stay on the throne for 14 years. And these wooden sandals were the sandals that Bharata took and brought to Ram. Do you understand? Some point explains, but in which Ramayana is it? In a, so don't ask me, don't ask me. So maybe in some Puranas, the story is there. Otherwise, the Pantas would not say if there was not in some Purana. They even quoted the Shlokas. How Bharata brought those wooden sandals? Bharata knew that Rama would come. He, he we, we will put all our stakes. Actually, Bharata, sorry, Bharata knew maybe Ram will not come because he knew Ram was very fixed in fixing the in following the words of his father. So he thought, I'll give all my put all my stakes stakes. Now I'll try, but he also brought the wooden sandals, and then when he came back, he put those wooden sandals on the throne. 
So what are the what is the story behind these wooden sandals? What was this wooden were these wooden sandals? Like for example, this Nupur. The Ramayana tells the story about the Nupur, the anklets of Lord Krishna's feet. Some one time I told about the two Nupur, two anklets of Lord Ram of Lord Krishna's feet. I told the story before. This Nupur, they're not ordinary. God is always with two things, always. What? His flute and his anklets. Nupur. So the flute story is in the Puranas. You can read and find. Shilatita Maharaj, one time he was saying, our Shilatita Maharaj, he was telling and he even quoted. Actually, the flute is Saraswati herself. When Lakshmi Devi stayed in the chest of Lord, you know, the Shrivatsa China, Saraswati also performed austerities. And she told Bhagavan, Look, Lakshmi, you kept in your heart, in your chest always. Why did you give me up? Give up on me. So, no, sorry, why did you give me up? So, like, why you left me? So, So Krishna told, okay, I'll give you a blessing. You always will be with me in so the Prayuga. And I always keep you on my mouth. And you also will enchant everyone with the sounds. Shatita Maharaj would quote this shloka from the Purana. One time I asked him, tell me about the flutes. And he told me about the flutes, all this. About Lakshmi, everyone knows the story. So, so about the anklets, I already told one time how the anklets... Of Krishna came to his feet, like the story of the anklets. Okay, but now the wooden sandals of Ram, the glories of the wooden sandals of Lord Ram. Who are these wooden sandals? What is this love history? Gaur Premanande. Okay, Duarati, it's 8 o'clock.